Today we're talking about changing the definition of consent for sexual assault. Uh, the new language provides clarity to survivors, jurors, and all parties involved. Today, Colorado lawmakers will discuss changing a state law that could help more sexual assault survivors get justice. It's a tough topic, certainly, but important to talk about. Yeah, this morning, we're taking a 360 in-depth look at lawmakers' efforts, the proposed changes, how many cases are reported in Colorado, and the challenges bringing these cases to justice. Last year, more than 6,500 Coloradans reported they were the victim of a non-consensual sex crime. Pretty alarming, considering it means there is one new victim every 80 minutes in our state. And that's just what's being reported. Experts say that number could be three times as many. So this legislative session, Colorado lawmakers are working to help more survivors report what's happened to them by changing the law. Denver 7's Colette Bordelon joins us in Colette. They want to bring consent into the conversation. Yeah, it's part of a bipartisan bill that's not expected to face much opposition this afternoon on the House Judiciary Committee floor and sponsors tell me it's on the fast track to the governor's desk. For sexual assault cases called prevalent yet underreported and under convicted, survivors say bringing the concept of consent into the courtroom, it's long overdue. My name is Kim, and I'm a survivor of sexual assault. No matter when or where. I was raped in Montana at gunpoint in 2007. Cases like Kim's, who now lives in Colorado, deserve their day in court. That lack of consent is the crux of sexual assault. Newly filed Colorado House Bill 1169 would change the language of state law right now consent isn't even mentioned in the statute, which says, quote, causing submission of the victim by means sufficient to cause submission against the victim's will. Our definition of consent for rape or sexual assault is out of date. Bill sponsor Matt Soper calls the language dated at best, confusing at worst. Jurors struggle to understand those terms, and yet the judge really couldn't turn to them and say, it's about consent. Lawmakers want to change the definition, making it more specific. Knowing the victim does not consent. And the most difficult cases to get convictions on are rape and sexual assault cases. The hope is the language change changes the likelihood of a conviction in the courtroom for cases that already have lots of variables for a jury to consider. Not everyone responds the same way to a sexual assault but jurors don't necessarily get armed with that information. For survivors, it's another step in an uphill battle. The updated language in the statute more accurately and clearly reflects the reality of sexual assault. Using the definition of consent to clarify their cases. Kim says the language change is an improvement, but believes the phrase knowing the victim does not consent would be stronger if it was written as without the consent of the victim. That aligns with the FBI's definition of rape. Colette, even if the definition changes, though, we've just heard that going through the system can be challenging, that these cases are some of the most difficult to prosecute. So why exactly is that? There's so many reasons, Nicole. Each case has their own complexities in what can be a confusing process where many survivors don't feel like they're being heard. Those with the Colorado District Attorney's Council say it's become obvious they needed more support on such cases, which can lack physical evidence or witnesses, and emotional or trauma responses may result in plaintiffs acting differently than a jury may expect. That's just a handful of considerations in the courtroom, all on top of the re-traumatization mm -hmm of testifying. And I'm told no matter the outcome of a case, the penalty for a perpetrator will never match the harm done hmm. to a survivor. Live in the studio, Colette Bordelon, Denver 7. Thank you, Colette.